Hello, my name is Michael Gray, mining analyst with Agentis Capital. I'm here for fireside chat with Walter Coles, CEO of Skeena Resources. Skeena has the Eske Creek asset, which is located in northwest British Columbia's Golden Triangle on the Taltan traditional territory. Um, Walt, your company has had um, fantastic share price performance in the last 12 months, plus 600% return. Can you provide just a snapshot on what the confluence of factors that drove that performance were? Yeah, I think there's three, three main reasons that the share price has done, done pretty well over the last 12 months. I think the first reason is that the market has, been, has become more comfortable with the concentrate that we're going to produce from SK. Uh, SK has this, it's a legendary mine produced, you know, back in the 90s and early 2000s. It was an underground mine that produced an average grade of two and a half ounces per ton, like ridiculously high grade mine. We're now doing an open pit, and it's still very high grade for an open pit, but uh, uh, th the history of SK is there were impurities that came along with that production, um, that high grade production. We're much lower grade, we have much lower grades of, imp of impurities, and I think helping the market understand that has partly driven the acceptance that this is a really good project. The second reason is we put out a PEA that, that put economics around that grade and uh, uh, you know, underpinned, you know, what's the IRR going to be? What's the NPV on this project? And then the third reason is that we've just recently announced a deal with Barrick, where we remove this sort of Barrick uh, back end right into the project, and and removing that overhang, I think it took our stock from two dollars to three dollars. Yeah, consolidated, one hundred percent ownership. Correct. Aspect. Fair enough. How about, uh, you mentioned some of the key attributes of the project. Can you maybe go into detail on some of the other key attributes of the project? Uh, yeah, I, I, think th I think there's, um, uh, again, it's, it's pretty simple. It's, it's got incredible grade, four grams uh, per ton, open pitable uh, resource. It's got size, it's about, uh, right now it's about four million ounces. Um, the other thing I would add that's, that I think is really important is it's in a politically stable jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not in Africa or it's not in, you know, some part of Asia or South America where, you know, governments tend to change frequently. Like we're in nice, sure. stable Canada. Um, the third thing I would add is it's in Taltan territory. Mm -hmm. And we're very fortunate to have the Taltan as our partners. Um, and I think those th all those things coming together make this a, a very unique, very unique project. I also like the low capital intensity. Can you touch on that? Uh, briefly? Yep. Um, again, it goes back to it's a brownfield site, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of the infrastructure has already been built out for us, like the roads, uh, power stations, and the, the consequence of, of of being a brownfield site is our capex is only going to be uh, 300 million Canadian as it's defined in the PEA. Um, so very attractive relative to the amount of production that we're talking about. The PEA defined a project that would produce almost 300,000 ounces a year of gold equivalent production. And can you talk a little bit about the infrastructure in place now versus when it was operating, especially the power? Yeah, great, great, great question, because it's so critical to why, uh, you know, we're able to move SK forward and, mm -hmm. and have it be such a profitable looking project. Mm -hmm. um, historically, it was powered by diesel and propane. Yeah. And I'm told that back in those days, the energy represented about 50% of the operating cost. Today, we're super lucky. We've got three new hydroelectric facilities right next to SK Creek. Uh, they recently sold, they were built in the last seven years and they recently sold for about two and a half billion US mm -hmm. to give you an idea of the, mm -hmm. the, the, you know, to quantify that investment in infrastructure. Back to the point about energy as a percentage of, of OPEX, our cost with cheap, clean hydroelectric power is probably 10% of the total operating cost is now energy mm -hmm. relative to back in the day, it was closer to 50. And relatively small open put, uh, pit footprint for the 300,000 ounces gold equivalent plus. Yeah, it's uh, the mill will be around 7,000 tons a day. So it's not, uh, it's not one of these massive projects that again has massive capex. It's, it's, it's small capex, small footprint, but again, we have the benefit of, of relatively high grade for an open pit. Let's talk a little bit about the Barrick uh, transaction. Uh, Barrick looks at tier one as being over 500,000 ounces per year yep. versus certainly in my analysis, most seniors view 300,000 ounces a year or greater. So with that, um, 
there is a fairly small peer group globally, by our count, less than six that have that type of uh, asset amongst the juniors. Um, what, do you, what have you really done to meet or exceed, um, or are you going to do to exceed the stated goal of five million ounces at five grams gold equivalent? Yeah, um, uh, great question. Thank you for that. And, and yes, you're right. There are very few projects that have over 300,000 ounces a year, open pitable, uh, you know, production profile. But um, uh, myself and, and our management team, we, we're, we don't want to rest on our, our laurels. Uh, we think we can improve this project s substantially. As you mentioned, our goal is to grow the resource from 4 million ounces at 4 grams to 5 million ounces at 5 grams over the next six months. And just by virtue of doing that, like increasing the grade 25%, that would take our production profile from 300,000 ounces to 375,000 ounces. Mm -hmm. And okay. I should also, another important point is that right now, 80% of that you know, gold equivalent production is gold and 20% is silver. Okay, if silver enough. prices rise, then that, that mix uh, can kind of change. So my goal, our, the goal of our management team is to get this to a Barrick tier one you know, qu qualification. Look, we're thrilled at what we've done so far, but we think we can do better. And from 375 to 500,000 ounces, you know, it's almost like a little chip shot. We just need some good luck with the, uh, with the expiration over the next 12 months, and maybe we can get there. Okay. And <coughs> Barrick is a shareholder. Maybe uh, can you walk us through where their share ownership position is and what their rights are on the project right now? Yes. So... Uh, on closing, uh, the transaction with Barrick on Eskay Creek, Barrick will own 12.4% of the equity in our company, mm -hmm. but they will also have uh, warrants that would allow them to increase their ownership up to 17%, and they have some other ancillary rights, such as uh, an ability to participate in all their financings right. to maintain their, their pro rata ownership. They also have an opportunity to appoint someone to our board. Uh, we also got from Barrick a, an 18-month uh, standstill agreement where they won't uh, uh, launch a bid for our company without board approval okay. yeah. um, while we're doing all this you know, work to hopefully grow the size of the project. In addition to a 1% NSR. Thank, well. you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Yes. Um, what are the, if any, are the tough hurdles on the environmental side? And maybe give us some insights as to your relationship with the Taltan. First Nation. Sure. I'll break that up in two sides. I'll address sure. the environmental part first. Uh, we're very fortunate, again, because it's a brownfield site, right? It's mm -hmm. so much easier to permit a, br uh, a, site that's a site that is already disturbed rather than yep. one that's, that's uh, you know, brand new. Uh, the second thing I would, I would add is that parts of our project are already permitted. Mm -hmm. Generally, the hardest thing to permit is a tailings facility. We're very lucky. SK already has a fully permitted tailings a storage facility that has ample capacity for the project that we're envisioning. Yeah. Um, uh, going back to your other side of your question about mm -hmm. our relationship with the Taltan, that's very important from a permitting perspective as well, because if you don't have the social license mm -hmm. uh, of the local communities, if they're not supportive of your project, uh, I think you know any project will struggle without that kind of local support. So the Taltan for us. Is a, is a critical partnership. We're guests in Taltan's ancestral territory. We're only there at their invitation. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they and us both believe that, that this is a project that can bring a, a lot of a strong, positive economic benefit to the Taltan nation and the province of BC as well. It was a good news story when SK was operating as an underground mine. They also have part ownership of the uh, hydroelectric uh, facility. Can you touch on that a little bit? Yeah, I, I, I thought it was very innovative uh, on the part of Taltan to uh, to be an investor in the uh, mm -hmm. in the hydroelectric facilities. Yeah. They own, I, I believe, it's five percent right now, mm -hmm. and so we would be buying power from from that uh, hydroelectric facility right. that Taltan's are owners of. And our goal, it's something that that Taltan and and Skeena have talked about, is uh, hopefully we'll uh, have the Taltan as equity owners in Skeena, uh -huh. uh, something very similar to what, what already exists for them with the uh, hydro facilities. Okay. And can you talk a little bit more about the metallurgy in terms of where you're at in, in mapping out that flow sheet um, and the work done this summer? Uh, also, your hire of Shane Williams, if you could also comment on how he's uh, 
he's been integrated and, and uh, as a key person formerly with El Dorado, uh, Vice President of Mining Projects. Yeah, uh, Shane's been a, a, a great addition to our team. He has a lot of experience with open pit, building open pit mines in the far north. He did that in Labrador, Newfoundland, and northern Sweden. Mm -hmm. So uh, he's got a lot of experience at that. Uh, th the second thing I would add is that he was in charge of an operation in Greece for El Dorado, uh, a project called the Olympias right. uh, mine, which has some degree of, of impurities in its concentrate. So I felt that uh, his experience on these two fronts, building mines mm -hmm. in, the o in the far north and also dealing with concentrates that may have a little bit of impurity, he would be a good addition to our team. As far as what we're doing on the metallurgy to mm -hmm. advance this project, uh, right now we're creating concentrate samples that we're sending to smelters and to concentrate traders around the world yeah. to sort of firm up the terms mm -hmm. that we've had, uh, that we've received to date. As part of the PA, we got a number of, of term sheets from mm -hmm. uh, potential buyers who wanted to take, who wanted to contract for the total life of mine production of concentrate from SK, mm -hmm. even now, so early in the project, which always makes me think when, when guys are so eager to get, you know, contract all of your stuff that early, there must be pretty good margin in it for them. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> we're going to take our time on this, uh, uh, on these next couple steps and, and try to have a very competitive process to make sure we get the best terms possible for uh, our offtake, our concentrate. And that's even in early years where you have a little bit more of a penalty, you're still... Yeah, uh, you're right. Um, SK, the the has two stratigraphies of, of uh, mineralization. Mm -hmm. One's called the contact mudstone, and then underneath that is the rhyolite. Historically, in the 90s and 2000s, they only mined that contact mudstone. Right. Right. And the contact mudstone has the impurities. Once you go underneath that, the grade's a little bit lower in the rhyolite, but there are no impurities. Mm -hmm. So 70% of our ore is going to come from the rhyolite. Right. Right. And 30% and from the contact mudstone, which is what we mine first in the first three years. Mm -hmm. So once we're through the contact mudstone in year four, there's no more impurities and the concentrate is, is you know, your standard simple concentrate, very easy to sell with no penalties. Okay, fair enough. Um, and any insights into those discussions? Are they fairly broad? Is there, is there any color you can give us on some of the uh, off-take or smelter discussions? Well, interestingly, the, the big concentrate traders want us to sign confidentiality agreements, mm. uh, probably so that we can't talk about the terms that okay, they give us enough. with with other, uh, t you know, from a competitive so you've got that standpoint. Level of interest. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all the all the big names uh, that you would think of in terms of commodity traders um, mm -hmm. are are very interested, and uh, we have ongoing dialogues with all of them. Okay, and uh, just back briefly to the uh, Shane's hire as CEO and his experience with open pits and snowfall, you're going to have some snowfall to deal with at SK. Um, what's his view on the uh, management of snow? Is it, is it just put extra fat, more equipment on the on site? And Yeah, so as part of our, our PEA, mm -hmm. we added into the CapEx uh, all the snow removal equipment that mm -hmm. was deemed to be necessary to keep the roads clear, keep the open pit clear, and keep the operation going 365 days a year. Yeah. Uh, the way Shane's explained it to me is that moving snow is no different than moving dirt. Like, as an engineer, that's what you do. So uh, he doesn't believe it's an impediment to this project's uh, success. I think we also, as part of the PEA, we did schedule a number, uh, sort of a cushion of down days, mm -hmm. just in case there's some blizzard that comes through and and we can't operate for a couple of days, there's a cushion in there for that. Okay, and the Toltan, can you talk maybe to their uh, contracting capability, the scope of services they might be able to provide? You know, yeah, well, get to hi stage? historically, the Toltan Development Corporation, my understanding is they built the mill that operated back in the, okay. in the 1990s, and, and I think SK was one of the formative projects in the creation mm -hmm. of uh, TNDC, or at least its growth, so it's really an opportunity to come full circle yeah. to have the Taltan Development Corp come back in and help us build uh, uh, build SK version two. Yeah, I want to go back just to the uh, goal to get to five million ounces and five grams equi gold equivalent or above. What are the key drivers other than the infill program and converting some of the inferred to indicated? Can you tell us some of the key drivers as to getting to that goal? Because you guys are very confident. 
Yeah, well, I actually think that that most infield programs are pretty boring, mm -hmm. right? You're just sticking holes in between other holes. But SK is, is not is, is not boring at all in the infill. And, and I think if you looked at, at our, our last two press releases, you would see this where uh, we're putting holes, you know, in between, you know, let's say it's, it's you got two holes that are 30 meters of, of five grams. Mm -hmm. And then our, in our press release from last week, we drilled a hole that was in between those two and it was 39 meters of double the grade. Right, right. Right, so, you know, we talk about how are we gonna get the five million ounces of five grams. Part of it is the infill. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because the, uh, a lot of the inferred is that the grade is three grams and the indicated grade is six grams. Right. So just by taking that inferred and, and doing closer space drilling, we're hitting higher, you know, pockets of higher grade in between and that's raising the average grade. Right. So that's an important part that probably gets us half the way there towards our goal of five million ounces. Mm -hmm. And then the other, uh, other side of it is just uh, drilling off some of the near mine opportunities. Like we have some hints, mm -hmm. right? Where there's some drilling from the 1990s and 2000s that, that hit some pretty good intercepts mm -hmm. by sort of today's standards. It might be 20 meters of 10 grams. Yeah. But the cutoff grade back in the 90s and the 2000s ranged from 15 grams to 30 grams, meaning anything below 15 grams back then mm -hmm. was waste. So we're able to follow up on some of these, you know, holes that were considered duds back in the 1990s and put a couple holes around them and, and add more resource. So uh -huh. based on the grade of some of those historic holes, that's also what gives us the confidence that we're going to be able to grow this open pit to that goal of five, five and five. And you're certainly getting down to lower uh, horizons, potential underground mineralization that's not necessarily at the forefront right now in terms of the resource, but the potential is very yeah. intriguing. I, I, I see sort of three stages to this project. The first one is, is the, the main thing that we talk about, which is the open pit at Eskate Creek. Mm -hmm. Five million ounces of open pitable at five grams. But I would envision a stage two to this project where there's an underground component that mm -hmm. comes on later in the mine life, yep. and that's to target those, those lower mudstone layers. And I could see us if we have the drilling success that I hope we have, I could see us putting out a PEA at some point next year to sort of show the economics on that stage two for Fair an underground. Yeah. And then I would also add that we have a satellite project next to SK SNP, and SNP's about 45 kilometers away. Uh, we're, we're doing some additional exploration there in October, November, possibly mm -hmm. throughout the winter. And and there's a, there's a chance we could do a PEA on SNP next year. Again, it's like a, a stage three add-on to the whole SK Creek so you'd operation. Be trucking ore from SNP to or transporting it yeah. to a central mill at yeah. SK Creek. Yeah, got a couple minutes left. Um, what do you see as the potential for multiple expansion from here? I believe you're trading at about 0.5 to 0.55 price to nav right now, based on $1,700 gold. I think that's analyst consensus. And what are the 12-month uh, catalysts uh, and the roadmap ahead? Uh, also, maybe end off with the funding requirements you see going sure. forward as well. Okay. So, in terms of catalyst, let me start with catalyst. Yeah. So, uh, we're drilling like crazy right now. We've got an 88,000 meter program underway yeah. between now and the end of the year. In Q1, we'll have a resource update, and yeah. and fingers crossed, we'll we'll be announcing you know a resource that hits that five at five million at mm -hmm. ounces at five grams. Then in in Q2, we should have a pre pre feasibility study out on the open pitable portion of SK Creek. And that, that will immediately lead to a feasibility study in the second half of next year mm -hmm. on the open pitable area of SK Creek. And I'd look to project finance on the back of that feasibility study. Okay. Um, so those are, and, and also there'll be an impact benefits agreement with the Taltan along the way mm -hmm. in there. And we've started the permitting process as well. Mm -hmm. So those are the, the, the sort of catalysts over the next 12 months. Um, back to uh, valuation, mm -hmm. I, uh, typically a project like ours, the closer you get to production, sure. you're going to move from the developmental development uh, ratio of like a 0.5 towards uh, a one times NAV. Yeah. I would argue that a project with this kind of grade and a politically stable jurisdiction like this with the expiration upside should trade at a premium price to NAV ratio. Yeah. So better, no, than, point, agree. better than 0.1. So just by moving the project forward, we should see uh, uh, the stock, uh, I think, push higher uh, just based on those valuation metrics. But then the, the third thing 
is that as we grow the size of this project, as we grow the grade, the project economics will improve, and that NAV yeah. goes up. So yeah. we got two drivers, advancing the project and growing the project that will both drive the share price over the next, next 12 months. And your last question was on uh, financing. We've got $32 million of cash in the bank. We're funded through this year. At some point, you know, at the end of this year, or the beginning of next year, we'll do a capital raise to fund the pre-fees and feasibility studies next year, and, and probably a little more drilling. Well, great, Walt. Uh, that's all the time we have. Uh, really appreciate this. Maybe we'll do an elbow bump okay. and have a great conference. Okay. Thanks, Michael.